call this meeting to order. Um, before we get started with any preliminaries, do I have anyone who's had any ex parte communication concerning either of the sta uh, cases? I need to recuse. Yeah, I'll get to you. <laughs> yeah. I need to recuse myself from the first, first Okay, case. that would be fine, Mr. Hancock. You want to go sit in the, the audience? I have. Yes, sir. I, I talked with Keith Valentine on the um, items okay. he's got coming up today. Okay. Nothing that would influence me. Okay, nothing that would influence you. Thank nope. you. Um, anyone else have any ex parte communication? Madam Chair, I did speak with Mr. Valentine also several months ago, but it okay. was in relation to this and um, and the, the person that I, when I did my drive through, I just spoke to them mm -hmm. briefly that works there, um, but nothing that would influence me. Okay. Yep. Any conflicts of interest? We know Mr. Hancock has recused himself due to one. Um, anyone else? Okay, we'd like to welcome everyone here today. We appreciate the public coming. And uh, Mrs. DeSantos, we appreciate you being here today. We run into each other in the grocery store on Sunday mornings. So, um, we have a preliminary statement that I will read. This is a public hearing and we're the Putnam County Planning Commission. We're the designated local planning agency for the county as prescribed in Chapter 163 of the Florida statutes and we function under the authority of Articles 11 and 12 of the Putnam Land County Land Development Code. The primary responsibility of the Commission is to serve as an advisory body to hear and make recommendations to the Board of County Commissioners on matters related to provisions of and proposed amendments to the Putnam County Comprehensive Plan and the Putnam County Land Development Code. The members of this board will review each application and make a recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners at their regularly scheduled meeting on May 28, 2024. Procedurally, we will call each case by name and number. A member of the staff will then briefly explain to us the nature of each request. We will then take any comments from the applicant or their representative, followed by comments concerning the request. Please direct all comments or statements to the board and not to other members of the audience. Before speaking, we will ask that each person come forward to be recognized Come to the lectern, identify his or herself by name and address. After all persons wishing to speak have been heard, we will entertain a motion from the Board of County, from the Board. This motion will be voted on by the Board and become our recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners. The Board of County Commissioners will make their final determination regarding this application. All applicants have the right to withdraw their request at any time during the process. The following cases were advertised as being considered at today's meeting, but will not be heard at the request of the applicant. PUD 24000002 has been withdrawn. If any applicant wishes to have these cases heard at a later date, the case will be re-advertised in accordance with the Putnam County Land Development Code and the Florida statutes. Before we hear our first case, I do want to make a note. I didn't do this last month. We do have an ex, part, ex officio member of this board representing the United States Navy. And the reason for that is we have several overlay zones in Putnam County related to bombing ranges down in Lake George and down at Pine Castle in Northern Lake County. So that's the reason the United States Navy has a presence here. They are an ex officio member of this board and we have Mr. Mark McManus who is with us today. Um, with that, our first case to be heard is rezoning 24. Zero, 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 000001. Thank you very much for the record, Jennifer Gazelle, Planner 2. First case is a rezone from commercial general C3 to commercial intensive C4. The applicant is Ocean Investments USA LLC. The agent is Jean Bramlett. Parcel is 0 0.68 acre parcel located at 1086 North Highway 17 in Palaka, Florida. The applicant is requesting a zoning map amendment from Commercial General C3 to Commercial Intensive C4 to allow for a manufactured housing sales and storage. The purpose of the requested zoning map amendment is to rezone 0 0.68 acres from commercial general C3 to commercial intensive C4 to allow for manufactured housing sales and storage. The parcel is designated commercial on the adopted future land use map. 
The surrounding areas are mostly commercial retail C2, commercial neighborhood C1, and agriculture. The parcel is located at 1086 North Highway 17 in Palaka and has approximately 460 feet of frontage on Highway 17. The parcel is currently developed with an approximate 840 square foot office. The parcel does not appear to contain just gestural wetlands and is located within the FEMA, FEMA flood zone X, which is not a special flood hazard area. Should this rezone be approved, the applicant will then submit to the Development Review Committee, DRC, to satisfy additional development requirements. The DRC will review plans to ensure that the development is compliant with local, state, and federal development regulations. Agencies including, but not limited to, Florida Department of Health, Putnam County Public Works, Emergency Services, St. John's River Water Management District, We'll review plans to ensure the development will not adversely affect surrounding properties. So for aerial view, future land use, zoning, wetlands. Staff recommends approval of the request to amend the zoning map from commercial general C3 to commercial intensive C4. Staff finds that the proposed rezoning is consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the adopted comprehensive plan and meets the locational requirements of the commercial intensive C4 zoning district provided in the land development code and the comprehensive plan. Are there any questions of staff? Hearing none, is the applicant present? All right. Seeing that the applicant is not present, I have two speaker cards that I will entertain. The first comes from Ray K. Watley. Would you come up, please, to the podium, speak into the microphone and give us your name and address, and then tell us what you want us to hear. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I wasn't prepared to speak today. I thought I spoke next time, um, okay. but I think I've got it pulled together pretty good. Uh, first, thank you for hearing me today. Uh, and your name and address. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ray K. Santa Watley is my legal name. I live at 107 Price Street in Palatka, and my property, property is, all of my property, property directly abuts their property separated by the railroad tracks. So the entire back of my property sees the entire back of their property. Um, the concerns that I have today, I'm opposed to, at this time I'm opposed to rezoning, uh, provided that my issues could be addressed. Um, I think that um, I have pictures, um, but they're on my phone. I could email to the commission. Um, the uh, units that they get in, are, and I understand they're buying them either at foreclosure or they've been storm damaged, but none of them are nice units. They have roofs torn off, they have windows that are broken. Um, uh, they need a lot of rehab, I guess, before they're sold to their customers. Um, so that is right there on the street at Highway 17. So everybody that drives past there, especially on the way to the Blueberry Festival, sees that as an eyesore. And, I mean, it is. Um, there's um, a lot of brush around the property that isn't maintained, and there's a lot of vermin that live there, and I think um, all the continued activity is going to stir that up in the yards. Um, we have a lot. We, I've seen an increased presence of people walking around the highway um, up and down 17 that um, look like they're in transit from places. They could be homeless, they could be vagrants. Um, maybe they're just poor people from other neighborhoods that are walking to and from, they don't have transportation. But I'm worried that that might be an invitation for some people to like squat for the night or whatever. And um, I think there's also maybe, um, I, I understood when she said the reading that this was for sale and storage. They also do rehab to the units there. So I've seen them uh, painting the units. So um, there's air spray dispersed into the air. And um, I don't know what other type of rehab that they have. I don't know if there's things like oil changes involved to 
the axles on the units or anything like that that I would want to be contained. And I would hope that if it is granted the use of this property for C4, that there's at least a visual barrier on the back of the property, so I'll have to look at this. And that's what I had to say. Thank hope, you. Hope I kept it to three minutes. <laughs> you did, you did fine. Thank you so much. Um, question, they will be required to do a buffer, correct? Yes, ma'am, they will. And that's 25, how high? 25 feet. Okay. No. no the, the buffer's 25 feet it's, high. It is not 25 feet high. <clears throat> um, it, it's depending on the zoning district, and the, ma the, the lady that just spoke is residential, so it would be a type 20B buffer, which is 20 foot wide, um, six foot privacy fence, 20 foot canopy for trees. I mean, there's a variety of ways they can satisfy. But there will the be a buffer required. That's correct. Okay, thank you. I've, I've got a question as it relates to the mobile home stuff. Do we have, I know we have like a density requirement on lots for um, impervious surface and coverage, lot coverage and stuff. Is there anything in uh, the code that addresses that for transient buildings? Um, meaning, you know, we're, we'll obviously have permanent parking there, so there will be some sort of impervious surface for parking and mobility issues, but the fact that everybody that comes in to obtain a building permit has to provide a site plan that demonstrates they're under whatever certain percentage is of impervious surface, but here we are talking about a mobile home place that's going to store those, and if they, you know, in effect could bring in units, set them side by side by side and cover the whole lot with do we have anything in the code that addresses that? <clears throat> yes, sir, we do. Um, so whenever it's commercial zoning, it's um, dictated by the, the future land use that's underlying. So with the commercial future land use, uh, let's see, the maximum permitted impervious surface area is 85%. So 85% of the land can be impervious surfaces. That's out of the comprehensive plan. And, and that impervious surface will include, that calculation somehow includes the transient structures that will be there? Yes, sir. The last time we reviewed a mobile home sales center through DRC, um, we required them to more or less block off where the mobile homes would be located and provide the maximum square footage of home that could, that could locate that area. So in that case, it was like a 26 by 60. So that the largest of what could locate there was taken into account for that calculation. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Is there any impervious surface on that site yet? There is. There's a 840 approximately square foot office building there now. Okay. Couldn't remember. Okay. Is there anyone else? I see we have Mr. Chris Hancock. Come forward, give us your name and your address, and tell us what you want us to hear. Yes, ma'am. My name is Chris Hancock, 280 West Cocoy Road, Palatka, Florida, 32177. I see this site every day when I pass it. Um, it can best be described as a mobile home graveyard. Uh, they bring in mobile homes that are destroyed, and, and it's really an eyesore. Uh, I want to point out that it's 0.68 acres. It's not a large lot. Sure it used to be a uh, post office, a U.S. post office for Boswick, and they built a new one, and it mm -hmm. became an office building. Then uh, most recently it was a used car lot, and they had a pile of junk cars behind it. It's just not something that you want to see from the highway coming into Putnam County, in my opinion. Uh, at any rate, uh, I, I want to say this as well, the, the notification process that Putnam County is doing is a disservice to our citizens. We are not putting signs up. There have been no signs on that lot the entire time. And the people out there probably do not even know they're having it. I know that they post it in the newspaper, but we are not enforcing putting the signs up and so it, it had no signage at any rate i've said what i had to say i thank you very much thank you 
Uh, question, Mr. Baker, Mr. Helms, what's the deal with signs? I didn't see one either. <clears throat> We're required to place signs. We are not required to upkeep those signs. So when we go out and place the signs, we have staff take pictures to verify that the signs are there. And what happens with the signs after we leave is nature happens. Trucks drive by, blow them over, rain comes, wind comes. We can't control that. I've never that. noticed that being a problem in the past. But it's a big problem now because we're not getting signs in a lot of sites. But I know over the years, you know, here and there we would have signs missing. But now, are they being, I don't know. So I, I have personally put the signs up myself mm -hmm. um, on multiple sites and been told they were not put up there. So I know it is a problem, but we are doing what we're required to by law. And I have done them myself and hammered them into the ground and stapled them to it and, and done what we have in regards to that. Um, a fix for that, we, we have discussed that. I have talked about doing uh, a different type of sign, but as of right now, that's what we have and that's what we've been using. Um, but I, I have gone out to a site and put them up myself right. and then someone come have. by and said, the next day said they weren't there and I know I put them there. So I'm not saying that they weren't there and they don't blow down because they do, because I go by and like, oh, they are down. So we're Is not required any... to do that. So if that's something you, you want to do, it's, I mean, it's, it's man hours to go by every single day because once right. they go by, you know what I mean? So we do take documentation of it. So. Is there any type of notice on the sign that removal of that sign is not proper? Uh, and that's the other lot, thing that comes with that. I mean, just like with, I call it politician signs that are put up, they get moved and it's, I mean, it's against the law to do that. But again, I'm not a law enforcement officer. I can't speak to that. But I do know things happen when people don't like certain things. That are right. I've, I've seen a lot of signs removed. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I have too. Okay. Well, if they're placed in the public right away, the public works removes them anytime they move. That's, that's, that's correct. True. Yes, sir. Okay. I, I realize there were no signs there myself as well. Okay. Anyone else liking to speak either for or against this particular application? If not, I'll bring it back to the board for consideration. I'll make a comment if I may. Please do. Um, I have to agree with Chris on his statement about the graveyard situation. I've personally noted a number of places where around this county where I've sat on this board and approved things uh, that all of a sudden do become graveyards for things such as semi-tractor trailers and so forth and so on. Uh, and this would be an absolutely horrible place to have that. So I would agree with that. Okay. Anyone else like to speak on behalf of the themselves for the board? Erin? Um, I just was, well, of course the aesthetics of it are not, are not good. I know that's not what we're here to discuss, but um, it seems like an intensive use for such a small lot mm -hmm. to me. Very small. And it doesn't really, I know that the staff says that it's consistent, but it doesn't seem consistent to me because we have C1 and residential. We don't really have any intensive uses there other than a gas station. Um, we have Dollar General across the store street. That's retail. Yeah. I mean, that's it's different. Okay. Anything that's else? Nice. And I will note that this is a case that the Navy does not have any interest in. So Mr. McManus is just sitting there being quiet. Um, any other questions or concerns from the board? At this point, then I'll entertain a motion. I'll move. We recommend that we deny case number RE00001. I have a motion from Mr. DeSantis. And the reason for that, Mr. DeSantis, we have to give a reason. Reason is I don't think we need that kind of an eyesore right on Highway 17. Uh, and that's a very, very small lot to have that kind of an operation going on anyway. You're talking about a building lot for a home rather than bringing in mobile homes that are in derelict condition. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Mr. Hafner has seconded. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, can we just verify with legal if Mr. DeSantis's reason for objection is a, a valid statement? Yes, sir. Yes, it is a valid statement. We need to address the Land Development Code and the Comprehensive Plan. I mean, 
do you want him to to look it up in there? I mean, you can, Madam Chair, you can have a reason that's it's correlated in one way or another with Putnam County Code. Right. But it doesn't necessarily have to be a a specific code uh, section. Okay. At least that's my understanding. You right, right with that, Zach? Brian, you okay? Okay, well then we go with that. And Jenny, you got all that down. Any discussion further? Hearing none, I will call for the question. All those in favor, please say, signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye, all against. We have denied this particular motion that will go to the Board of County Commissioners as a denial. Mr. Hancock, you may be reseated at the dais. <laughs> um, we're going to hear case number PUD 24000001 in a minute. Um, got too many zeros in there. <laughs> I guess Dade County would need those zeros, but we don't. But anyhow, that's just me. Uh, this is a case brought by Keith and Joyce Valentine, and are you ready to present? Yes, ma'am. Jennifer Gazelle, for the record, this application is to amend the existing planned unit development, PUD, Ordinance 2023-004. The applicants are Keith and Joyce Valentine. Parcel is 34.75 acres located at 145, 163, and 162 Willis Road off of US 19. The applicant is requesting to amend the existing 34.75 acre PUD to add 16 more RV sites and reduce the setbacks to 10 feet on the sides and rear and 25 feet in the front. The parcel is designated agriculture on the adopted future land use map. The trails and outdoor PUD currently includes a mix of recreational, commercial, and residential uses. Currently, the following uses exist on site, 44 RV sites, 10 primitive camping sites, three single family residential units, resource-based and activity-based recreational uses, events including weddings, reunions, and retreats, equestrian uses, agricultural uses. The Trails End Outdoor PUD consists of several parcels located on parcel 08-10-25-0000-0020-0050 is the residence of the applicant. In 2023, the applicant processed an exempt subdivision to alter the boundary lines of parcels ending in 0020 dash 0050 and 0020 dash 0000. The applicant's request was approved to reconfigure those portions of the property. There is another single family residence located on parcel ending in 0101 dash 0000. In 2016, parcel ending in 0020 dash 0000 and 0020 dash 0030 received a special use permit, SUP 16-002, to allow for a landscaping business and an equestrian business, commercial agriculture. Parcel ending in 0020-0030 was removed from the PUD development agreement and reverted back to the original agriculture zoning. Should this PUD amendment be approved, the applicant will then submit to Development Review Committee, DRC, to satisfy additional development requirements. The DRC will review plans to ensure the development is compliant with local, state, and federal development regulations. As it pertains to this property, the DRC will ensure the placement of RV lots is acceptable based on the development agreement and the Florida Department of Health will review the plans for potable water and sanitary sewer. Other agencies included but not limited to Putnam County Public Works, Emergency Services, St. John's River Water Management District will review the plans to ensure the development will not adversely affect surrounding properties. I have the wrong. That's not the problem. I know, I have the wrong maps on. I'm sorry. That's all gone. I know. Sorry. 
<laughs> oh, they could. I apologize. I put the wrong float. maps on the slideshow. Um, staff recommends approval of the request to amend the trails and outdoor PUD to allow for an additional 16 recreational vehicle sites and to reduce the front setbacks to 25 feet and the sides and rear to 10 feet as requested. It is consistent with the requirements for PUD zoning, consistent with the future land use designation, and consistent with other comprehensive plan goals, objectives, and policies. Any questions of staff? Uh, I've got a question. I've read through all that stuff, and I see that there's a reduction in setbacks, but what is the current setback that's in force there? Do we know? There should be a strike through underline development agreement in your packets. I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Um, I believe I saw 100. Yeah. I mean, I just, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm curious to where, you know, if we're changing a setback, what we're changing it from. 100. And I'm assuming the DRC had some sort of involvement in that PUD from before that established those setbacks. DRC did approve it before it was finally approved. So it looks like the prior development agreement was a 100 foot setback for the front from all property lines not included in the PUD. So all property lines of uh, that wasn't under common ownership. Mm -hmm. uh, say that one more time. I don't, I don't guess that. So it, it was so 100 feet from all 100 sides. Feet mm -hmm. in, the, in this in this area, this 100 feet from outside of yes, that sir. whole. 30 whatever acres. Yes, sir. And I'm assuming that was done as a buffer to the neighbors, yes? Well, yeah, I mean, setbacks are both buffers and to provide additional access for EMS. Um, right. So I mean, the buffer they, would be like 10 foot wide. So the ones that would have disagreed with that at that onset, that would have been a compromise of such to keep the noise or traffic off the property lines and we are now reducing that from 100 to 10 is that that's correct that's correct yes. okay can you tell us what the thinking was was that a request from the applicant or yes ma'am okay we'll get the applicant up in just a minute yes ma'am I would also like to point out that I was out there today and there were no signs posted anywhere <laughs> I put their signs out as well as I put all the signs out in Bostwick and I know I put their signs out because I myself was out there doing it. And it <laughs> was hot. Usually can at least see them dead in the ditch. It was hot that day. <laughs> There's nothing, I, absolutely no trace of a sign anywhere on either one of these sites. The stakes are still up. At, they're in, it's still up in Bostwick also. I the stakes are that. still out? The st yes, ma'am, the stakes I'd, are still out. Okay. You know. All right, any other concerns? I, we need to look at that setback and talk about that when we get the applicant up. Anything else from, from the board to staff? Hearing nothing, I will bring the applicant up, please, if you would come up and give us your name and address. And I'm sure you've got some things to tell us, but in what you tell us, please talk about the setback issue. I'm Keith Valentine, 165 Willis Road, Hollister. Uh, on the signs, just on the other one that we talked about. What's happening is on the cardboard signs, they're on a survey stake. And so here's what'll help you. If you put two survey stake signs on both sides and staple them, and if you wanna be sure it'll stay up, just put another survey on the back side and that'll hold it up because the staples just won't hold with one, with one sign, with, with one stake. And what, they're all, the signs are there today, they just have fell off because the wind and it, it, it blows it. So just put two survey stakes on both ends. If you want to be sure it'll stay up, tap the other survey stakes on the other side and just staple them through because it'll save you some money because if you start putting metal signs up, it won't work too well. But that'll help you on, on any of the properties because if you have an irrigation system, the irrigation hits it. It just takes that paper and it just doesn't hold up. But the signs are at my place. They're just laying down, and I don't want to touch them. Mm -hmm. So Thank they're laying you. down there just on the ground there. They're white. And, of course, your signs are the green 
right. like bright green. And that's what it will what, help you. Okay. Uh, are we retrieving those signs after the cases have been completed? <clears throat> no, ma'am. That's part of the problem is the signs that we're putting out right now classify as biodegradable, so we don't have to go pick them up. So and the stakes are biodegradable as well. Yeah, it's wood. <laughs> They're rot. Eventually. <laughs> Termites will eat them. That's Eventually. Right. Okay. <laughs> on, on the setbacks, Termites I, eat them in no time. our setbacks. I did that when I first started because I did everything by myself trying to figure this out. So my setbacks weren't from county officials or anything. It's just that my first group that we had in there, we they were off a hundred feet, and. I did all this, I've been doing this all myself as tar, par, far as getting the, the PUD back three or four years ago. So it's mm -hmm. just my setback. This time around, I own the property. Um, the back side of my fence is I've got a fence up to keep the bulls from fighting between us and the property in the back. But it's all woods on all sides of my property. So I'm, I'm not worried. Y'all did good on the 25 feet in the front. That's, I guess, county rules for the road. But... I did that, and I probably should have thought long term, you know, I just need to go to 10 foot off. And so that is only to keep the RVs from that come in 10 foot off back there. But it's all woods on both, on all my roundabout sides, it's all woods. So we um, have no problem. But we need the setback because my roads that are coming in, the, the dirt road that comes in, we need enough room so that people can you know, go around this next weekend. And again, I want to thank you for what you've done for me, guys. Y'all made it great for us out there and for the county and the Tourist Development Council that they asked me to be on. But it's been a great project. This weekend, just to let you know, we have 20 of the elite, elite anglers coming in starting Sunday, and they love it there. And so we've kept it. It's an old western town, and we've kept it that way, and we want to keep it that way with the people that come in. I don't want any problems with my neighbors, and, and they haven't. The last time we did a change, we had no neighbors come and eject, as you remember, and it's just been the greatest thing for us, so we want to keep it that way. So the signs, I'm a landscaper, so the signs, the stakes don't hold up the paper, and then, of course, um, my place. It's an old western town. It's my farm. It's my ranch, and mine and Joyceland's, and it's been a great thing for us. Okay. We hope that you'll allow us to have the 16 extra because that's going to be my pull through sites everything I have has just been back in so the, the 16 will go in the center of the pasture right there and it'll be perfect for pulling through there okay any questions of Mr. Valentine I did have one um, Mr. Valentine I know when we first started it was about the trails and horses and and um, farm animals and stuff like that how, how much is of that is still going on I didn't really see I saw the cows in the back but that's all I saw there today the horses are when if you came straight I could have in missed past them. the office yeah they're off to the right there where the barn is the old corral I call it the uh, okay corral but the horses are right there we've got four horses out there I've got five mama cows and one bull so and we have to hay them because I don't want to mess up my pasture. So we, we do have our, it'll always be a ranch operation, cattle operation. And the people that come, they come with treats and they walk to the fences and the horses come up and the cows come up and they love it. So it's just great for the people. Putnam County people are coming in and staying at our place because they're building homes. So they'll come and they'll stay there so that they can have they're permitting and all get going for their home. So we've had a lot of that. On a scale from, I don't even know how to do it, something on Google where they go on and have a good ratings and all. Ours is one of the highest ratings, and I don't even know how to do it. So if I knew I'd do it, I'd push it even farther. But <laughs> people come, and, and, it, it, and, and the ratings that, that we get is great. And what that's happening is it's going, they're calling the hotels, and the hotels don't have a place to stay, so it reverts down to the cabins, and we're one of the first people that they call when it reverts to the cabins. And then the people, the workers that come in for Seminole Electric, GP, the solar farms come in, they've got a place to go, and they're continuing coming back for the shutdowns for Seminole and GP and families. 
One other thing, I don't take up your time, but what's great is, and I told Joyce, and I says, look out there, and they look out there, and there's five families with all these kids, and they're out there playing kickball. So it's good, and it's a place for them to go to get out of the big subdivisions and come here and live on our, our little old western town. So that's why I hope you let us add the 16 units there that'll help us out. And the setbacks is important because I don't want to cram up all in the middle of the farm mm -hmm. where they don't have room to move. Okay. But I did, I did the 100 foot. Okay. Not, not, really. not to worry. Okay. Thank uh, you for explaining that, I'm Terry. I do have one more question. So on one of the exhibits is exhibit B. It has a phase two and a phase three. Um, but I can't read the numbers on that, or I don't know if there are numbers. Phase the phase two, three is not part of what we're asking for today. Am I right or am I, I wrong? I put phase two and phase three because that's just how I do it when I put my wells in. Phase two is when you let me have from 18 to 44. Okay. Phase three was when it went to the 44. So it, my phase is not right. So it's just how I put Got down you. there okay. my, my, my goals and things that I do. So, there, so that's what. So this depicts all 60 on or however. Is it 60? Yes, ma'am. The middle section there in the middle that says 49 through 60, mm -hmm. that's our pull through site. So really and truly that was part of a phase three and to go in there or I could have said phase four, but that's what that is. And they're all numbered. So when they come in, it circles around. Gotcha. It's just hard to read on such small I know, print. It's, <laughs> I, it's my my own drawing. It's not your so. fault. It's just, you know, on small paper. It happens. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're used to it. We've gotten smaller and more difficult to read than that, so I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions of Mr. Valentine? Uh, Mr. Valentine, do you own all the parcels there to the east outside of the, the pud? To there? the east. Um, it looks like there's one, two, three, maybe three or four houses there that are. I, I own out of the, the. I own. Can you, can you describe it? The only thing that I don't own outside this 34 acres, no, I do own another cabin down the road on Willis Road, so I own the... the no, I was just talking about the stuff immediately adjacent to it. looks like the drive in there. Oh, the drive yes. that comes in there, it looks like there's maybe three houses and a barn in the back or something. A mobile home, maybe. I, I to the own, right of the road as you to come To the right in. of the road that comes in there. So when you're coming on Willis Road to the right, you mean? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. There's a, uh, my, I have three neighbors on the right side of me. The one neighbor right across from the driveway, he's in a nursing home, and he doesn't live there. Um, but the rest of them are just my neighbors right there across the road. I don't know I anything w east of Willis Road. That's the East way. of Willis Road. I don't know anything east. Okay. And I'm trying to... Uh, uh, just make these three partials nice. Uh, the two, the two-acre partial I took out of it last year, the 162, is just that it's an uh, uh, an agriculture part of it, but I didn't want it in the PUD plan. We're trying to get my in-laws here, who are sick, so we're trying to save some stuff for them that we could help them. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Valentine? Thank you, sir. If you'd remain around, we might have more come up. No, you can go back to your seat. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak either for or against this particular application? Hearing none, I will bring it back to the board for consideration. Before we talk, I would like for Mr. McManus to share the Navy's position on this parcel and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so this property lies within range compatibility zone three. I provided you handouts. That's defined as the airspace restricted for Pine Castle operations, but does not include the airspace where aircraft are flying with energized or uh, operational weapons. So it's aircraft maneuvering to and from the range, entering the range. Um, the Navy's recommended guidelines for range compatibility zone three is no more than two single family homes per acre. However, I'll also note that RCZ three covers at least half of Putnam County. So I understand what that would be asking. So uh, while we do uh, state that it, it exceeds our recommendations, we have no objection, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, bring it back to the board for discussion and consideration. I'd like to say that I went out there and looked at it today and I think it's pretty classy, 
classy area. I think they've done really well with what they've got. And uh, I know you can't worry about what's going to happen, but at some point you got to be concerned about if it sells to someone else, whether they'll maintain it in that same type of position. Yes. So. Um, my question is for Zach. Uh, I just want to be consistent kind of with these things. I know every PUD is different, but the 10 foot setbacks, is that inconsistent with other um, PUDs that we have for this type of reason, you know, for recreational? I don't believe it's inconsistent, no ma'am. Um, I'm trying to think of what other PUDs we've recently approved for this type of use, and really the only comp would be um, off of LC Drive, which is yet to be developed. Um, but there, it's the uh, five acres across from what the old Captain Joe's, yeah. So I think they're 10 foot setback and 20 foot on the front property line as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll make a comment. I also think the, the project speaks for itself. I think it's been very well done and mm -hmm. very well received. Uh, I, I personally don't recall hearing any objections to this property from anyone in the community, so nope. I'm good with it. Okay. Are we ready to put that in action? I'm asking for a motion. Hmm? I need the, the number. Oh. I need to look at your number. I'm sorry. <laughs> PUD. Madam Chair, I recommend that we approve PUD 24-0000001. Excuse me. Yes, 01. Because? I think it's in, uh, where's my paper? Consistent with the goals. It's consistent with the, compre the goals and objectives of the Putnam County Comprehensive Plan. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Um, Hancock and Mr. Hafner. Is there any further discussion? Uh, will, will the, if we make this uh, approval, will this have to go through the DRC as well? And will, is it a possibility that it could be addressed at that point? This goes to the DRC next, doesn't it? Uh, the short answer is yes. The long answer is it's got two trips to the BOCC, and then before any improvements occur, he would have to stop by DRC. That's because it's over 35 acres? acres? And over 10 acres. Yes, ma'am. Any PUD over 10 acres requires two hearings before the BOCC. Any, no, my, any my, my issue is not the additional site there. I have no problem with that, and I really have no problem with the setbacks on the edge. I just have, have concerns about the any of that stuff that touches people that, Mm -hmm. You know, whether the, whether the setback came from the property owner or came from the, the board is, mm -hmm. doesn't really matter because they would have been, that would have been weighed in the decision making process whether to approve or deny the first time. So, mm -hmm. um, like I said, I, I don't have any issues with the additional spots. I just, I think, I think that the setbacks need to be addressed as they relate to people that are already there. Right. Now, this is not abutting any other personal property, is it? This is only abutting areas it, within the park it appears to be abutting at least three other residences okay. okay that's right all right yeah so the properties lying east are separated by the the road that's there mm -hmm. um, the properties lying south are under separate ownership north and west all are under separate ownership with the exclusion of one of the small parcels where uh, mr valentine has like six or eight cabins um, located southeast of the the main development right uh, the one other question I had what a reduction uh, let's say there was the, the within the hundred foot setback as it stands does that um, preclude him from development of roads or improving roads around that is that or is that only for structural stuff like structures there so setbacks are applied to structures over 30 inches in height so as far as RV sites go, can, can he develop an RV site in the setback since there's no permanent structure with it? No, sir. No, that, that would 
the RV sites would not be allowed to be in the setbacks. However, um, like power lines or septic lines or anything like that that are underground, they can locate into the, mm -hmm. the setbacks. And improved asphalt driveways or whatever can be inside the setback? That's correct. So the only thing that the setback would... Right up adjacent to the property. Foot, ten foot off. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that, I mean, that's my only concern. I'm, I'm fine right. with the additional spots. Just think the setbacks right. need to be addressed. It's and not right. just you're, RVs you're either. I mean, it could be any accessory structure. Suppose, like he said, he hays his cows. If he needs to put up a hay barn, he could put it ten foot from the property line. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. <coughs> and we need to note uh, PUD 24-000002 was withdrawn prior to today's meeting. Uh, the next item we have um, old business and from the county commission meeting yesterday, and in talking with Mr. Helms, uh, the Board of County Commission has scheduled a joint BOCC, Putnam County Planning Commission meeting to be held on Wednesday, May 22nd at 10.30 a.m. with Ray Spofford, who is the consultant who has been doing the land development code. And this will be a time for Mr. Spofford to present the revised land development code to those two bodies orally. We will not be going through it line by line as we had been promised we would do. We will be hearing a presentation and there was an implication yesterday that they were hoping that we'd go ahead and approve everything and hand it over to the BOCC right there at that meeting. Madam Chair, may I clarify to you on that? Yes. So. We're working with the consultant to have the documents in our hands and printed out two weeks prior yes, to that Yes, and we need to know whether we want electronic or paper. Or both. Or both. Or, yep. So, Jenny, would you make note? Mr. DeSantos, do you want hard copy, electronic copy, or both? I'd rather hard copy. Okay, Mr. Morris? I'd both. Both. Mr. Both. Hafner, both. I would like both. Mr. Hancock? Both. Ms. Fortner? And Mr. McManus, you're welcome to chime in too. All righty, and Mr. Mr. Perry, what would you like? Okay, all right. May 22nd at 10.30 a.m. will be a joint meeting of the Board of County Commissioners and the Putnam County Planning Commission. Here, Madam Chair? It should be here, yes. So, um, and there will be a presentation by Ray Spofford well, you know, that's a good question to ask Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Harvey, since yes. he does cook, cook yes. pork. Be prepared for lunch here, yes. Uh, yeah, you, it might be a long meeting. They don't think it will be because they think it will be a mere presentation. Well, and the other thing, too, is um, with, with the ability to afford you all two weeks to review the document, I think the anticipation is that you come prepared with any of the revisions that you'd like to discuss yes it's a 323 page document it's up there <laughs> about an hour read you say mr mcmanus speed reading, speed reading. Hours, pages <laughs> yes so please mark that on your calendars it is a morning meeting on a Wednesday. And they wanted you all to know far enough ahead of time so you could make arrangements to not be at work. And I thought to myself, not that many, well, most of us work, I guess. But Mr. DeSantis and I, and uh, Mr. Hodges, do you work? Sorta. Sorta. <laughs> I work at Sorta, too. Um, but anyhow, that's, that's coming up May the 21st. Uh, is there any new business, any other old business that needs to come before the board? Is there any new business that needs to come before the board? 
We need to approve the minutes of March 13th, which you'll find in your packet. And to approve the minutes from March 13th. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any other comments or questions or concerns? All those in favor, please signify by saying yes. Aye. Aye. Yes. Whatever. Yes, aye, whatever. It is 4.50. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>